So this is by no means meant to be perceived as any kind of beginner's tutorial. This is explicitly a demonstration of the techniques used to do the voice lip syncing for this program. And I should point out that this is perhaps one of the cheapest tricks that's done in the entire process. However, despite being a cheap trick, it's one that works and one that will get you through a large amount of dialogue quickly. And when you're recording something for three minutes, it's absolutely vital that you be able to do that. So let's start out with this demonstration file I've recorded, which A says, demonstration file. And now we're going to stretch it out using the uh, effect of change tempo in Audacity. Where was that again? Uh, speed effect. Change tempo. Now, to get a, four, a 2x slowdown, which is... You can go to higher speeds, higher amounts of slowdown, but I find that going from 4 beats a minute to 2 beats a minute creates... Cuts the, sp cuts the speed in half increases the size of the audio file by a factor of two. And now, if you listen to it, it sounds awful. A demonstration file. And listening to your own voice, of course, is only going to make it worse. However, you now at least have an audio file, and we'll save this export to a demonstration file 2x. And now you should have a file which you can add to your uh, sound file here, a demonstration file 2x. So this is now a slow thing. We're going to move it so that it doesn't quite start at the beginning of the animation because I find that gives you a little prep time to be ready to move the, the sliders because what we're going to do is real-time capture. So let's see what that's like if we hit play now. A demonstration file. And we're going to do a thing called that I call real-time capture, where you move the lips of the puppet with your hand on the mouse. So what's happened here is I have a shape key driver hooked up to this bone, two of which. So moving the slider vertically is connected to a shape key that moves the mouth up and down, and left and right to one that narrows and widens the mouth. Now, combining the two of these allows me to create the appearance of a little bit more sophisticated lip sync, even though all I'm really doing is flapping it up and down. Done at a slower tempo, we can speed this up later and generate what look like a lot better results. So, let's start that now. Hit play, and then grab. Now, this is the part where you use your automatic keyframe insertion, because now, while you're recording, it'll add keyframes. So, let's begin. A demonstration file. And notice that Blender has now added a ton of keyframes, a very large number of them, almost for every motion capture, well, literally for every motion capture event of the mouse. So now that we have all of these keyframes, though, they're now too slow, because what we're going to do is remove that strip and add the one that had the original audio. So sound, a demonstration file one. Okay, and now they won't be synchronized at all, of course. So I'm going to find the dope sheet. The dope sheet's, of course, just a listing of all of the keyframes. So I'm going to take just the ones that were important, so those have now been selected, and I hit S.5. And what that's done is taken these keyframes and shrunk them down. They are now at one half the spacing that they were before. Which means that they should be just the right size for the sped up audio. So once we play around with the position of the, the audio, we can get a demonstration. Move that forward a bit. So here we go again. A demonstration file. Obviously too early. A demonstration file. There you go, that's pretty decent. A demonstration file. And that methodology should run very, very quickly by any standard compared to methodically inserting a keyframe for every phoneme. And meanwhile, you can go over 
and use these other sliders I have, such as this one which controls two shape keys for facial expressions, and this one which controls the blinking of the eyes. Although admittedly this is an eyebrow blink, which is a little bit unsophisticated, but thus far it's served. And do something like this. A demonstration file. And then if we start over again, a demonstration file. At each pass, we have now added more sophistication to the animation, so by now you get a demonstration file. And that's pretty good. We can start over again, do a little bit of a head tilt. A demonstration file. So now, your complete animation, a demonstration file. Now we have the beginnings of something that looks like real fluid motion and life. A demonstration file. And so this illusion was very rapidly assembled. Extremely slapdash, really. But it's enough. It will serve. And now I ask you to go out and try this yourself because, in my opinion, nothing would serve us better than to do a lot more animations in a lot less time.